But anyway, what's going on, everybody? This is another episode of Comic Book Cinema. Today, once again, I am joined by Shane Smith. We are going to discuss our favorite comic book movie portrayals, whether that's a villain or a good guy. I guess I will start us off, Shane, if you don't mind. Yeah, go right ahead. I will give my, this is probably going to be a controversial pick, especially amongst the audience that watch these videos, all 40 of them. Uh, But I will say Ben Affleck as Batman, I thought did a really great job. I love his costume. I love the way his voice sounds when he's in the bat suit, especially when he's in the mega bat suit, the the one that he was uh, fighting Superman with. I think he's got the look. He's great as Bruce Wayne, not only Bruce Wayne, but also Batman as well. Some people had a problem, and I did too, with the way he just on a whim murders people. But that's not a decision that he made. That doesn't have anything to do with his portrayal of the character. And I think that as far as the way that he portrayed the character, he's one of my favorites. Great Batman. Yeah, I mean, just to before I before I name my pick, John. Well, you know, I'll go ahead and name what my pick would be. Uh, honestly, mine's a, Iron Man, Tony Stark. And we're by the way, we're not going in any particular order or anything like that. We're yeah. Just, uh, well, yeah. I, it's good to know because I had picked my number one before I shuffled out who was going to be my other four. You didn't say top five, but I always try to prepare a top five, and you went straight for the jugular. But that's fine because, honestly, dude, I've had over 10 years of preparing for the moment of being able to have the conversation that Iron Man is my favorite. Robert Downey Jr.'s performance of Iron Man is my favorite performance of any superhero of all time. I think that that's that's fair to say. If I had more catalog, it kind of is the same thing with rappers, really, you know, but uh, I digress. But if I had more catalog to pull from, there was a possibility that Christian Bale would have been my favorite Batman. But I also am aware that Christian Bale might have could have possibly just been a boring dude that played Batman and the movies were just really good. You know what I'm saying? Like there's because no doubt. Batman's a little different. There's no doubt Christian Bale is a phenomenal actor. A lot of people consider him to be in their all time favorite Batman, you know, like of all sure. time. Personally, I don't. I think he's great. Don't get me wrong. I think Christian Bale is a terrific Batman. Maybe it was because and this is going to bring me to mind. If I had to, if I had a number one pick, it would be Heath Ledger as the Joker. I think that his performance oh, wow. was just, it will stand the test of time. At least for the rest of my lifetime. Yeah. I, I think that it's going to stand the test of time for a very, very long time. A wonderful, chillingly good performance. It, the thing is, is even once you get past the hype and everything else that goes along with it, yep. the people, the, the way that it has affected the merchandising, the way that it's been promoted, it was marketed even after his death, the way that it consumed the internet, the way that it was such a big deal, no matter what, even if you look underneath all of that stuff, it was still an amazing performance. Like it was not overhyped because he died. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to be morbid or anything. I'm just saying. But it's true. It was, it, he his performance really was amazing, especially someone who's over analytical. When you look past the fact that it's like this is a movie, that mean this guy was acting that out, like he was yep. actually acting that out, and like just the certain things, his mannerisms, things that you look for for a, a great actor when you find out that they did things like improvised or whatever. You know, it's like oh wow, you know Leonardo and Django, he actually you know did get blood on his hand and he went on with the scene and did this stuff. It's like when you see that Heath Ledger actually performed the way that he did on camera. In that movie, it, I mean, I, I feel what you're saying for sure. <laughs> it's funny you bring up the whole like sympathy because he died angle, but it's true. I remember before I saw the movie for the very first time, this is a long time ago, folks, but I was going to the theater and I can remember hearing all the buzz, you know, this was roughly around the time that smartphones started to get a little more popular. You know, I had a smartphone, I think at this time, it was 20, what was that, 20? No, that was 2008, right, Shane? It was 2000, somewhere, you know, Tommy was the first person I knew that got an iPhone. 
Okay. Yeah, I didn't have an iPhone in 2008. Anyway. I don't know. I don't know that it was in 2008. I'm just saying Tommy was the first person I knew that had an iPhone. And the only, it was after, it was around that, a little bit after that, whenever I started being around Tommy all the time, or around that time when I started being around Tommy all the time. So, yeah. But this movie, yeah, it was, this movie was like roughly 2008 when it came out. So I didn't have a smartphone at the time, but I remember there was a lot of hype surrounding his performance in that movie. And I can remember thinking in the back of my head, like, I bet you, you know, like, yeah, of course it was terrible that, you know, he passed away tragically, but I can remember thinking in the back of my head, I bet he's getting sympathy because he just passed away and a lot of people are probably overhyping his performance. And you're almost bitter about it. Like you're kind of like being young too, of course, but it's like, why is this guy so popular? Cause he died, you know? (laughs) But dude, when I saw that film for the first time, I immediately knew that the hype was real. I, I can remember his performance, there were several occasions in the film, different parts of, the, of, of his performance that just gave me chills, you know, and made yeah. me shudder in my seat, man. Like, to this day, I, I don't, I mean, like, that's the thing. That's the tough thing. As good as Joaquin Phoenix did as, I hated that film, by the way, the Joker film, but yeah. I loved Joaquin Phoenix's performance. As good as he did and as unique and different and, and of a take on the Joker that was, it's not as good as Heath Ledger's performance. And, yeah. and that's the thing. I don't think that his performance is going to get touched for a long, long time. I mean, it, it, to me, something that's interesting with roles like that, like I always think to myself, like when I get older, like when my son is like, you know, you know, 15, 16 years old, are they going to start Harry Potter over again? You know what I'm saying? Reboot Hear me it. out why I say that. because The reason why is because we've had the Joker before a few times prior to Heath Ledger. You've got a little, a couple of things to pull from, but what his performance was like leaps and bounds beyond like what the, uh, I'm not trying to take away from the previous people who had played Jack Nicholson. He's, you know, at the time that was a pretty renowned role, like him and Michael Keaton both got awards for that movie. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever saw those videos of them accepting their rewards, but Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton's going hard on everybody because he's basically being like, I just won awards. Y'all said I couldn't win because I'm a superhero. Like y'all said, I couldn't make, win awards as Batman, and I did. Like people were making fun of him. I digress. But I need to go back and check that out. That sounds awesome. I because- stumbled across, I stumbled on it the other day, dude. And Jack Nicholson and uh, Michael Keaton, like they both, you could tell in this video, they had been on stage several times that night. Like they had just been racking up awards and they went up both together to get this one. And like Jack Nicholson, like whispers in like, like they're both, you can tell they're like homies just in this room with all these people just being like, all of you guys made fun of us like two months ago. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like that's the way they were acting. And it was just pretty awesome because if you look at them now, they seem kind of like uh, uh, away from the pack kind of guys. Like, so they probably are like, we hate Hollywood, but, You know, here we are. (laughs) And sometimes that's enough. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I also want to say something in response to all the folks who were uh, writing those, who kept those cards and letters coming, you know, who said I couldn't do the job. (laughs) And I just like to say, uh, when you come from a family like mine and you come from where I come from, all you got to do is tell me no, baby. So just keep those cards and letters coming. I I'll, I'll bring this one up too. We're talking about actors that have passed away. Chadwick Boseman was a great Black Panther man. He, uh, <clears throat> there was something about that dude. Obviously, now we know a lot more about the real person that he was behind the camera, but he just had this pureness and innocence about him, you know, like, and he just, his performance, like, it's one of those performances that the more I watch, the more I appreciate over time, you know, like, when the right. film first, and I have my problems with the first Black Panther film. I think that they made him a little too jokey and they should have kept him a little more serious. But once again, just like Ben Affleck, it's not Chadwick Boseman's fault, you know, the direction they decided to take the movie with. Right. His performance was top notch, both in, I actually liked him better as Black Panther in Civil War as opposed to his own film. But like I said, that was more creative direction and not anything to do with Chadwick Boseman. But he was a great Black Panther. You know, when he passed away recently, that was a big, probably a big thing and a big decision that was going around in the the halls of Disney, them trying to decide whether or not they were going to recast 
or uh, do what they ended up doing is just make a movie set in the Wakanda universe. And uh, let's talk more about the characters that surrounded the Black Panther uh, and not recast, you know, Chadwick Boseman as the Black Panther. But either way, man, he, uh, he did a great job and what a great guy, right? Like the things that he did. uh, And, and, you know, it really hurts my heart too. Like towards the end of his career, people were talking smack about him on social media. I mean, us, us people on social media, we can be so mean, you know, these days. It costs nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And they were talking about, you know, people were saying stuff like black Panther, more like the crack Panther, you know, because he was getting so skinny and and none of us knew because he didn't go public with that information that he was suffering from cancer at the colon cancer it was cold he cancer, was right? he was he didn't want to tell anyone because he yep. didn't want people to be worried about him yep he didn't want sympathy or anything like that or pity man his performance was really good yeah. another one for me too is this right behind me right here some people don't like this version of superman they don't like the the movie they don't like henry cavill himself i think that if I had a video game where I could create the, the next person to play Superman, I think that that is how perfect this person is for that role. Like he looks the part so well. He doesn't yeah. look like a twin of Christopher Reeve, which I thought Brandon Routh. He doesn't look like Brandon Routh, like a, almost like a carbon copy of Christopher Reeve in modern day. Yeah. But he looks, I mean, he has the look for sure, man. He's a freaking humongous guy. Just like Ben Affleck, they're both huge and you know jacked. They probably took all kinds of roids before they played those roles. But oh, uh, come on now! But well, man, <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> no, but man, not, he I, looks the part. You got to give that to him, and he's yeah, a great actor know, too. I, I say I think that you know they they do look different, but for some reason I could easily believe that the guy from Smallville was Henry Cavill in high school. I, can I know it sounds I know it sounds weird but for me whenever I saw Henry Cavill or whatever only reason I even know his name now is because my wife you, you know how that goes my wife thinks this guy is you know he's not Robert Pattinson he's never going to take Robert Pattinson's place but you know he's he is talked about a lot in my household anytime he does anything or gets his mustache CGI'd or whatever it is he uh he is brought up but like I thought, I was, uh, the thing that was interesting to me, I was like, you know, he kind of looks like the dude from Smallville. I was like, they they don't look just alike, but like if you became a man version, like the guy from Smallville was obviously grown, but he kind of looked like a little wiener. Like he just yeah. looked like a loser. <laughs> no offense I to him. Was a big fan of Smallville, by the way. That's something. That's a show that I never really got into. I wasn't either, and I'm sure most uh, of the the truthers that like listen to your show probably are like Smallville was so off, it was not right, <gasps> you know. But <laughs> I, I'll say this though: at that time, we didn't have much else other than Smallville. I don't know exactly when that show debuted. I want to say that was the like the early to mid 2000s, but it was a while ago. At that time, we didn't have much like that. So yeah, I mean. If I had I had access to that show at the time that it was f- first on air, I probably would have watched it, no questions asked. But I never watched it when it first came out, maybe because it was on HBO or some channel that you had to have a premium subscription to or whatever. But never watched it when it first came out. And then after it had already been out for years and years, you know, we were already at a point at that point where we had shows like Arrow and The Flash. and Right. Which, well, th- but Smallville came out on the same on the same thing, which is crazy. It came oh, out on the really? WB. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, back I don't know if it's called the WB now, but it you know back in the day it was on that whatever that was that channel. That's where uh, Smallville came out on. Okay, I, I didn't know that it was on normal. And and, to, and I'm I'm only saying that because I remember, and the only reason I remember is because I'm a product of culture and social media. So just forgive me, but uh, that that's what I'm here for. That's it's the only reason you asked me to be on your show, John, is because I know some things and some things I don't. But I do remember that when I was a, a chap, that that was the channel it came on. I never watched it until later on in life. I had a friend when I lived in Jackson who watched it religiously. He was like, "This, you know, this is the show," and that's the reason why I became adapted to it. But I, that's co- kind of irrelevant. But, you know, he does kind of look like Henry Cavill. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see that. You know, another one, Shane. Or Shane, do you have any? I've been spouting out my list here. Tell us somebody else off your list. Okay. Iron Man, obviously. I didn't go too in depth. But Iron Man is my number one. I think yeah. that 
I, the the reprise i think it also plays into kind of how like you can kind of blame the directors and the people who wrote the movie for christian bell like you know what i'm saying how i said like he didn't have much catalog but the catalog we had was top tier of him as batman it's like with iron man like the way that i feel was that era when iron man started was an amazing era for Robert Downey Jr. because he was in a lot of good, the Sherlock Holmes and Tropic Thunder and Iron Man. And obviously Iron Man was the one that went, went the distance, but those movies were like, Oh man, like this guy's awesome. I didn't know who Robert Downey Jr. was before that. And then when he came Iron Man, it's like, that's the one that stuck. And obviously they eventually had a lot of plans for him. It wasn't at the beginning. I'm sure that might not have been the plan, but they it was definitely the plan later on. I digress. Heath Ledger was my number three for that, that whole idea. Uh, I always say, and then I always say that number five is going to be the only woman on my list, of course, because I suck, but is going to be Scarlett Johansson. You know why it's number five? Because that's where my list ends and Scarlett Johansson is Scarlett Johansson. And I don't know anything about Black Widow. But she, so, does, she does fill the role very well, I think. She looks phenomenal. You know, we, we can both agree on that, I would think. But Respectfully. Uh, respectfully. Yeah. Yeah, she's a great actress. I wasn't a big fan of her solo outing. But she's got the look, okay? She, like, the, the look in her eyes, you know, and, and, and you know, there, there are certain mannerisms that she does on screen as well that's – that gives the character a little bit of flair and, and it's not it's not just sexuality it really is the fact that she is good at playing those serious strong semi-strong woman roles yeah she is she is and that's the thing about films they're all subjective i don't think that i would put her in a top 10 list but but don't get me wrong she's not uh in the bad performance list she's still great at doing at playing that role you know uh and it was also heartbreaking when we lost her in, in the uh in yeah. the end of uh, end game, you know, but yeah, and she was with Hawkeye. Like it was kind of it was emotional. It was a, a, a crummy moment for sure. Yep, but, but uh, yes, yeah, so I, I do think... want to tell you. I want to tell you my number two, okay? Oh, because yeah. my number two, since I've already buried the lead with telling you that Tony Stark was the guy for me, I can agree with that. Though I think for me personally, Tony's like uh, or Robert Downey Jr. is like number two or three somewhere in there. Like, yeah, in the top three for sure. I feel like it's a gimme. People, yeah. hey, predict who's going to win the uh, NCAA national championship. Well, it's probably going to be Alabama. So, <laughs> what about this one right here? Yes, he's number four. He's number four. That's number two for me. Well, number two for me, I I would say Star Lord, man. Okay. Star Lord's my Star Lord's my number two. I'm scared to read the comics because I feel like I might feel different, but that character to me is like one of the best characters in the whole MCU, man. Yeah, Chris Pratt's a great actor, and uh, I think that anything that he touches is going to turn to gold. He's a swell guy, too. Like, when you hear him talk at these award ceremonies and things like that, you, you, you can tell the guy's a Christian, which, for me, that's a big plus. Like, I think that that gives him an extra thumbs up in my book, you know? Sure. He seems like sure. a good good human being. Yeah, I, I wouldn't quite put him in my top ten list, but, however, just like Black Widow, I think that he's he's he does really good in that role. He makes the movies more funny and interesting, you know? Yeah. I was just going to say, it's possible that my bias could come from the fact that I, I watched Parks and Recreation before. Oh, yeah. He out. was great in that, too. He's yeah. also really good in the Jurassic Park films, too. I like him. I haven't those. watched those. I haven't watched those. To me, they've all the trailers and everything around them just look corny. But It, it is. You know. But, you know, if you're a big fan of the original Jurassic Park, you know, there's moments in those newer ones that make you go, oh, that's Give cool. you what you're looking for. <laughs> Yeah, I got to talk about my my man, Hugh Jackman. Yes, yes. He he gave me this authentic set of uh, adamantium claws that he used on the set of X Men First Class. By the way, not First Class. I'm sorry, uh, X Men: The Last Stand. He gave these to me, autographed to me, and gave them to me. So, did you see him in person? And he gave them to you? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Dude, John, either way, though, I was wanting to comp comment on that earlier. I was so excited when I saw in the first video we did, I wanted to tell you that I was like, oh, man, 
I, uh, Wolverine's on my list, but then I realized it wasn't a top five, so I didn't bring it up. <laughs> yeah, no, this just came with a box set of movies that I bought. I think it was maybe the Blu-ray collection of the X-Men movies, but anyway, Hugh Jackman, man, come on. Give the guy his props. The dude played, you know, started playing Wolverine in 2001. At the time, he was pretty much an unknown actor. I think before that, all he had been in was Van Helsing. Hold on. Not that's not necessarily true. He was in Swordfish, wasn't he? I think Swordfish came out after that, though, Shane. I don't think he was in Swordfish until and maybe I'm wrong, but I thought he was a relatively unknown before X Men came out. It might have been, maybe he was in you might be right, John. But you are an old you are an old man, so true. And I, you know, but Swordfish and uh Van Helsing were really close to the first X Men. But I think Van Helsing was actually after X-Men 1. I think that yeah. he, he wasn't initially considered for Van Helsing until after the first X-Men came out. And everybody was like, oh, this dude's really cool, you know. He did a great job, and he just continued to get more and more yoked for the for the. Yes, movie. yes. Oh, my gosh. The, the, the shape that this dude got in when he was, like, in his late 40s, early 50s is remarkable. Even in the Absolutely. last one, Logan – Oh man, such a great film! Just his performance in that. I, it was, I'm pretty sure it was I, different. I, it was different than the other X Men movies, but it was it was in a good way. Like yes. the way that he, you know, they played him as like an old dying man, more not to you know uh, uh, take the rip the band aid off, but as an old dying man, like like he and he killed the role like he it was a whole different role from what we originally saw him in, but he was playing the same character. I don't know. It was nice. Great performance. And another one for me, too, that I got to talk about. Not only Ian McKellen, but also Michael Fassbender. Both Michael Fassbender and Ian McKellen playing Magneto, the older and younger versions of Magneto. I love yeah. both of them playing Magneto. I think that they both knocked it out of the park in their own way. Ian McKellen does a really good job of conveying that very mature and wise Magneto and Michael Fassbender does a phenomenal job of bringing that, like he brought a different type of intensity to the role, which was great because we always saw that bad side, like kind of start to come out a bit with Ian McKellen. But when we got the Fassbender performance, he just brought a little something extra to the role. Like he really made you believe like, okay, this dude's crazy. He's going to, he's going to kill them all. Like he'll do it, you know, just to get, just to get his agenda and his, and his, you know, across like, He'll do whatever, you know. So I I liked his performance a lot, too. I think both of them deserve a spot pretty close to each other for bringing a great performance to the same character that was very different. Professor X, that's his name, right? That's that's who the uh, pretty much his mortal enemy is, right? (laughs) Yep. But uh, yeah, Charles Xavier. There we go. And and now he was played in the original movies. He was played by... uh, Picard, right? The guy who I don't know what that guy's real name is, but Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, that's right. He was played by uh the guy from Split in the newer movies, correct? Yes. James McAvoy. Oh, you, you looked it up, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Had to have. Oh, that is the least memorable name ever. <laughs> but like he he had a he did a really good job. The one movie that I saw of the newer X-Men movies uh that i saw in the entirety of it he did a good job at playing a young professor x which i mean obviously the thing is is when you have these legends like john stewart or whatever his name was like they're gonna kill the role because it's like the only reason that back in the day they didn't have a big pool it's like they pulled people the way they could and the way they knew now you can pull new artists or new uh actors that you didn't even know existed like nobody else knows these people existed. So we found them because we know they're good for the role and we'll pick them. But back then it was like, Hey, like this is the guy who plays serious, you know, wisdom and this. And it's like, he's the guy to get, we got to get him. And so they got him because they're like, we're going to spend the money on it. One thing Marvel has never been afraid to do was spend some daggum money. (laughs) <laughs> marvel whether it be sony fox or disney they yeah. have always been willing to spend some money oh yeah for sure yeah he did a good job too another honorable mention for me is the guy that plays thor chris hemsworth i think he does a good job 
you know, he's really evolved his character a lot over the years, too. He started off a little more. Uh, you're not a big fan, so he wouldn't make your top ten list then. Uh, okay, he's he's a good actor, or he's a good actor for what he plays. Yeah. The, the thing is, is my bias might come from the fact that I think that he just acts like a ditzy blonde. Like, and it's annoying. It's like, how hard is that? Like, how hard? Because the thing is, is even when he's being tough, of course, don't get me wrong, I would probably give him a, a, a 10.5 out of 10 every time he starts going hard. Like, I'm not going to – any of those – any of those actors that we talked about, when they get into the flex, I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go. But since the show is based off of being hypercritical, I, I would say, like, some things about Chris Hemsworth is, like, all he has to do is read, like, seven words, and they're like, oh. And take his shirt off. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the praise he gets is what I feel like Captain America should get just because Captain America is Captain America. But Captain America is on nobody's top five. That's very true. I, I wouldn't have thought to put Captain America up there. Hey, what do you think about Chris Hemsworth playing Hulk Hogan in a biopic? No. He, no, because they need to get somebody that was born and raised in the South because they've got to, ha- they've got to have the Hulk voice. Hogan in that, in that Netflix biopic. Is this a real thing? This real thing, yeah. It's coming out soon, like maybe at the end of this year or something. Is, well, he, is is he from uh, Britain or Australia? I think he's from Australia. Yeah. Well, then I guess that makes sense because Australians sound like rednecks. They sound like proper rednecks. Well, Hogan Hogan grew up in California. He, that's where he was born. Yeah, but listen to him, brother. That's not how he talks. You know what I'm saying, brother? It sounds like truck drivers from the South or something. Like the when we're talking about stereotypes, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it sounds like all any pick one of our uncles. As far you know as the saying? look, I mean, I think you know actors are good at adjusting their accents and you know coming up, but but as far as the look, man, he's got the look down pat for me. It's for, to play Hulk Hogan. You know, he was he was uh, he posted a pic a couple weeks ago, a month ago when they wrapped production on the newest Thor movie. And that dude is jacked right now, Shane. I mean, he is. Yeah. His arms are probably the size of both of my arms and my head <laughs> put together. I mean, he is just humongous, man. But, you know, like I said, he's an honorable mention for me, not necessarily in the top 10. Somebody that is in my top 10, though, Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman. I think that she's, a, she's all right, I'm sure. She she does a great job. Did you ever see the first Wonder Woman movie, Shane? I didn't watch. I didn't watch either one of them, John. Really? You need to check that out, man. The second Wonder Woman movie is garbage, but the first one is phenomenal. Very. I think. I think my problem is the fact that if I know that if I watch the first one, I'm gonna have to watch the second one. Even if I don't like the first one, I'll probably feel obligated to watch the second one because I want to know the the story. Like I get, I get, I, I look, man. I'm, there's a personal moment here uh my parents got divorced when i was a teenager and when that happened i think i immediately developed these issues of like attachment so when i watch these superheroes i'm like i want to know everything about them <laughs> i want to feel like their best friend i'm the same way in, in a lot of ways like you know like what especially when you see a character that you like or a movie that you like you know like if you watch part three and you're like oh i you know, of course, I'm going to watch part one and two, but right, right, yeah. I mean, he does a. I mean, she does a really good job. And you know, if you ever have time, I know you're a busy man, but uh, Wonder Woman is a great film. The sequel, I know you're probably like you said, you're probably going to want, want to watch it anyway. But sequel was not nearly as good as the first one. But first one, great performance. Well, you've seen. Have you seen her in Justice League? I guess Justice League wasn't anything to write home about. I did. I did see. I did see Justice League, and I did see her. Uh, I guess you know, she was actually in there for a little while in uh, Batman versus Superman. But you couldn't really like from just watching Justice League. You couldn't really like. I can understand how you wouldn't include her in your top ten, but watching that first Wonder Woman movie, she does a really good job in that. And um, that's what that's what everyone has told me. Everyone has told me that, you know, like, just try to take all the, which, you know, obviously there's 
we could go for two hours on talking about DC's kerfluffle, but everyone says like, just don't worry about whatever happens to be going on with DC. Just focus on her, like watch that movie with her character and then watch whatever movies you watch and just pay attention to any movie that has her in it. And she does that role very well. And that's what I've heard. And that's what my friends have told me. So apparently Wonder Woman is like, kind of like the saving grace of DC right now. Oh, yeah, it's it's one of their top, like, in the current DCEU, not talking about the Dark Knight films or anything that came before that, just talking about the current DCEU that started in 2013 with Man of Steel. I think that Wonder Woman's in the top three, easily. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Personally, I think that, yeah, you got Man of Steel for me as number one, obviously. Sure. Wonder Woman might be number two, even above Aquaman, which I thought was a really fun movie too. But yeah, Gal Gadot, great portrayal there. One that I think we need to bring up is Loki, Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Mm. Yeah. He does a really good job of that role. Like, I think that anyone else playing that role, that character probably would have died, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago. But the fact that Hiddleston does such a good job in the character and he's so multifaceted or multifaceted, that it makes you want to see more of that character. Okay, well, what is he going to do next? You know, what kind of trouble is he going to get into next? Yeah. Just like with Agent Coulson, that's why they ended up reviving that character and bringing him back for a TV show. And then recently they let him come back and make cameo appearances in some of the prequel movies. So, uh, you know, it's not necessarily, everything that's on the page doesn't necessarily create the character. What really creates the character in these films is there the performance from the actor? And when you have a performance like Hugh Jackman or a uh, Tom Hiddleston as Loki, I mean, like you said earlier, Robert Downey Jr., it just transcends the character, you know, and it yeah. makes it, it elevates the character that much more. And that goes back to my argument of recasting Black Panther 2. Like, as good as Chadwick Boseman was, I don't think that it would do anything for him and the character of Black Panther, but elevate it if they recasted it and that person excelled and did a really good job, you know, it would just continue to build that legacy, but that's another debate for another time. So uh, <laughs> other than that, I mean, I think that that's all that really sticks out to me as far as the top portrayals of superhero or villains in comic book movies. Shane, I know you're involved in some other side projects. Would you like to uh, tell us about uh, anything that you'd like to plug today? Uh yeah, you know, I mean, since since we're uh, closing, I do I do want to make a, a quick hot take. Okay. A quick hot take. Uh, or a hot take prediction. Okay. I, I think that this Morbius movie uh-huh. is going to be really. I think that it's going to be uh really bad. Really. Yes. I would say that that is seventy five percent likely. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the general consensus is for it, but I am uh, I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to be very excited about that movie. What's the word? I am cautiously optimistic about it, but I probably should be a lot more pessimistic like you when it comes to that, because this yeah. is coming directly from Sony. And nine times out of 10, Sony gives us a big fat pile of garbage. And that's why I'm so glad that Spider-Man is currently coexisting within the MCU. But I think that all my fears are going to come true at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. I think that they're going to find a way to permanently send him back to uh, his universe in the Sony world. Yeah. And we might get him back occasionally for big team-up films, but I think that he's going to be gone. What would you do if they sent him back and they started using Andrew Garfield again? (laughs) That would be stupid. You're talking about... Oh, if they sent him back to the MCU and used Andrew Garfield in the Spider Verse, yeah, they just continued. They just continued Andrew Garfield's world after he came to the MCU. They would never because Amazing Spider-Man Two was one of the worst, not just Spider-Man movies, but worst superhero films of all time. It was awful in every way. They they opened up a lot of new possibilities in there, but nobody cares to see it. You know. Even Jamie Foxx couldn't save that movie, man. Like the, the cheesiness and the the bad writing. The only good thing, the only redeemable thing about that movie was when when Stacy broke her neck. But even the the new version of the Green Goblin was <laughs> even the new version of the Green Goblin 
was terrible. It was, you know, William Defoe is a great actor, but his performance yeah. from the first Spider-Man trilogy didn't age very well. It became a lot cheesier over time. Well, the performance from, I can't remember the kid's name, but from Amazing Spider-Man 2, that was just, Oh, so much cheesier. The look was worse. Like it was almost like everything about the character they made worse somehow. Well, hold on, are you talking about somebody played Green Goblin in uh, Amazing Spider-Man? Yes, Amazing Spider-Man Part Two. Yes, they brought they brought Green Goblin back in Amazing Spider-Man. I didn't even know about this. I've never seen the movie, but I didn't know that. Well, Amazing Spider-Man Two is one of those movies that is. Oh, so bad. never mind. I remember that was the kid from that movie. With uh the first movie we, we ever saw uh Killmonger in uh Michael B Jordan that movie that like the kids had superpowers or whatever Chronicle Chronicle that's yeah. who played that's who played Green Goblin right Yep Yeah that guy looks like he's depressed <laughs> Dane DeHaan that's his name I don't know why I just thought of that but I, just... I digress you digress Organic Poison that's my podcast. It comes out every Tuesday on Deviant Behavior Radio at 7 p.m. That's deviantbehavior.com, uh, Deviant Behavior Radio. Or you can find it on Spotify, Apple, all the main places you can find podcasts. I have a concert coming up this week. It's going to be our next week, which I guess is technically this week, depending on what religion you follow. Uh, but uh, November 6th, Saturday. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the theater program in my hometown, McComb, Mississippi. And I cannot wait. It's going to be, uh, it's been a long time since I've been on stage. So it's really nice to be able to come on here and talk with you, John, and maybe get the word out to have some people come out. I'd like to mention that it's 17 plus main reasons because there will be foul language, but there will be no alcohol sold there. So I was actually told to not tell anyone that, but I'm telling you now because I want more people to come. So it is what it is. Heck yeah, man. I'm excited about that too. I, I might have to uh, to stop in and check on you guys. That, that'd be cool to see. Are, is it going to be the 396 hooligans? Well, I don't want to say too much. Okay. It was, it was originally going to be a 396 hooligans full set, but okay. now it's going to be a Shano and friends set. Okay. So I'm going to have a bunch of friends come out and perform with me. Nice. Who are those friends? You'll have to show up to see. <laughs> Jacob, maybe? Maybe James Harrod's going to dust off the microphone? and It's, it's actually going to exclude. It's actually only going to be me and Tommy. <laughs> okay. The whole show is going to be me and Tommy. That's awesome. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy has recently learned how to play 17 instruments at once. <laughs> well that's cool man i can't wait to see it i'm excited yeah man I, I, I i'm cracking a joke but really it is it is awesome it's going to be so much fun dude like it could be 50 people it could be 500 people there it's going to be amazing to be able to get on stage in front of my hometown for the first time in four or so years and it, it's been a long time but that's where it all started for me and i'm really excited about it so either way you know bringing more artists up and it's just going to be a good time. Looking forward to having a bunch of people there. Heck yeah, man. Well, thanks for joining me, Shane. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you, Jonathan, for having me on the show. Yes, indeed. Anytime, brother. Folks, thanks for joining us. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't already, check us out on Instagram. We're at Real Comic Book Cinema. We're also on Facebook. Thank you so much for your time. And until next time, have a good one.